So, good morning everybody. So, I'm going to present my work about dissecting the effect of the 16p11 point to gene dosage on brain structure. So, first of all, 16p11 point to gene dosage, what does it mean? So, in genetics, you, uh, it exists some structural variation of the chromosome, so the CND for copy number variance, and when you are controls, you, you have usually two copies of each genomic region, but if you have a mutation, you can have either a deletion, so only one copy of this region, or a duplication with three copies of these genetic regions. So with one, two, three, we can do some sort of linear regression and to analyze the effect of, um, of uh, the different number of genomic copies on some phenotypic and anatomy. So, and on the chromosome 16, so, so some of these uh, mutations are associated with some disorders, and in particular on the chromosome 16, at the 16p11.2 locus, you, um, you, you have a particular CNV that is associated with autism and neurodevelopmental disorder, uh, and both deletion and duplication are associated with autism. So, for the previous studies, um, we know already some phenotypic as aspects that are associated with the CNV, and at the anatomical point of view, only two, two studies, uh, two studies explored some uh, global brain differences and local brain differences in terms of volume uh, of the brain regions. Um, but these studies was with a low sample size and with limited. Um, yeah, analysis. So, a, go a goal for these studies was to expand the previous findings and to quantify the effect size on a larger multi site data set. To do that, we pulled together a cohort from Europe and a cohort from United States in order to have at least 70 patients in the deletion groups and 70 patients in the duplication groups. And in the middle, you have the different groups of controls. But as we pull together multiple cohorts, multiple scanning sites, and multi enfin, with different acquisition um, MRI parameters for the acquisition, we need to show that the noise introduced by pulling these multiple cohorts is, in, is limited in comparison to the improved power of this new data set. And our last, last goal was to distinguish the effect of this 16p11.2 CNV from additional familial factors. In particular, we, we, try, we, we managed to, to decompose the control groups in order to compare the intrafamilial controls. So I mean the controls that don't carry the, the mutation, but that have one member in their family that have the mutations. And we compare these intrafamilial groups with controls from the general population. So the image that I'm going to present you are the brain volume differences between the different groups computed from T1 weighted images. So first of all, about the global brain metrics. So in red, you have the deletion carriers. In blue, you have the duplication carriers. And in the middle, the merge control groups for the Europe and United States cohorts. So the main message is that we have a negative correlation between the number of the genomic copies and uh, for, for the estimated total infraconial volume, the gray matter volume and the white matter volume, as well as for some cortical surface, uh, the mid cortical surface area. So at, at least we replicate the previous results from previous study, but on a larger data set. Uh, now, the result about the local brain volume differences. So I don't have a pointer, but um, on A, you see the differences between where the deletion presents a higher volume uh, than the duplication with the controls as a baseline in the middle. Uh, so this is uh, the region I turned. So we have the, and on the other side, it's the inverse. <laughs> okay. And the other side is the inverse. So the main message is here um, through cohorts with these effect size maps that are computed from CoMD maps, 
we, we show that the effect size is globally similar through the two cohorts. And also, more interestingly, um, when we do a seven analyses with a sort of leaving one out analysis, each time we remove one side from the analysis, we have exactly the same effect size through all the results. So it's, it's, it seems like the, the, the results are quite robust. And the brain alteration, just to summarize, I'm, I'm more in the reward system areas, some language and social cognition areas, which is on with the phenotype of this patient. The last one is the cumulative uh, addition, uh, the result of um, the cumulative additional familial factors. So here you have the comparison between the deletion and the control groups of the general population. So this is the effect on the brain of the mutation in people welfare for a neurodevelopmental disorder in clinics. Here we compare the deletion carriers with the intrafamilial controls. So the same genetic background except the mutations. So we can assume that this represents the genuine effect of the mutation. And here we compare the intrafamilial controls with the control from the general population. So we can assume that we, this alteration represents the additional familial factors um, in, in the brain. And if you look well, this alteration plus this one represent more or less uh, the alteration present in the people with a neurodevelopmental disorder. So to conclude, we showed in this study that we can have a stable neuroanatomical signal on the 16P11.2 uh, uh, structural abnormality across cohort, across scanning site, across MRI parameters, which seems like a robust biological signal and not an artifact. And secondly, the brain alteration observed in the carriers that are ascertained in clinics for a neurodevelopmental disorder seems to be linked, okay, to the mutations, but certainly also to some additional familial factors. Uh, to finish, uh, we think that this third genetics approach could help to better understand a subgroup of patients with neurodevelopmental disorder because in autism, in, uh, in neurodevelopmental disorder, there is a lot of heterogeneity and this could help to have an underlying um, biological homogeneity to, to better understand this type of uh, disorders. Thank you and thank you to my group in particular, my co-author. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.